Can we clap those hands for Jesus? The one who created Bisha Kondi. <laughs> Hallelujah. My mentor told me, I have a mentor. My mentor told me that whenever people tell you that you are amazing, remind them that you are not amazing. It's your gift that is amazing. And the good thing about life is that your gift didn't come from you. Your gift came from God. So you cannot be amazing by something that you did not plan for, you did not pray for, you did not ask for. See, one of the things I've learned about life is that the things that God has bestowed on me, the best things that I have, I didn't ask for them, I didn't pray for them, actually didn't qualify for them. In fact, sometimes you can't even use them because, for example, please forgive me ladies in the house, but let me just use for an example. I don't know why God gave you a fine face if you cannot use your eyes to see your fine face except you ask a mirror to help you. You didn't pray for it. You didn't ask for it. You didn't even desire it. You didn't make anything. You didn't do anything for it. He just gave it to you. So if you ever find yourself lifting your shoulder because of something that you didn't ask for, you didn't pray for, that God gave to you by himself, something is really wrong with you. Praise God. So that's why I come in the simplicity of men. There is nothing in me that anyone should desire me. But the only thing that I have is the God that has called me and the God that I serve. So please don't mind Pastor Gideon. Don't join him. I have begged him that he should stop calling me daddy, but he has refused to listen. So please don't join him. More. I have told people everywhere I go, the day I become a daddy, I will do a full page advert on the papers. Full page. And I will do it in six national dailies in Nigeria. And if I have grace, I will do it outside Nigeria. Today. Now I have become, but for now, I am not. Praise God. Thank you for having me. And thank you for welcoming me. But I just want to remind some of you that actually, before everyone was, I am. And what does that mean? Before some of you entered this auditorium, I am sure that I entered into this place. So I remember when we came here, I was just asking him the questions. I remember that place, the other place, I was asking him some questions. But you know what? I'm glad that the way I saw it that time is not the way I met it right now. Oh yeah, that shows that you have done a great job. Fantastic job. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Jide. God bless you. And you know I love you. And I agree with you 100%. You do greater things than we have ever done. Yeah. That's the prayer I always pray for those who follow me. That whatever I have been able to do, God will multiply the 100 times over and invest it in their lives yeah. in the name of Jesus. And everyone in this house, I can only say this one thing for you. The true vine will bless you so much. That you'll be wondering what this, what, what is all this about? Why did I qualify for this? But you know what? God doesn't need any man's opinion when he's ready to do something in your life. He doesn't ask them questions. He didn't ask questions when he brought you into the family he brought you to. He just did his thing. And in the same way, whatever it is that you are desiring, the true vine himself will do it for you. Even In fact, let me just say this. I like it when we pray, but I always tell them, remind yourself that it's true. When I pray, God answers prayer. But you know what? God doesn't always answer because you pray. There are things that you never prayed about. For example, who prayed that he's going to get some oxygen this morning? Did you get some? No. Without the oxygen, can you pray? But you know what? You got oxygen without praying for it. If God can give you something that is so essential to life, even without you asking for it. <laughs> I've come to understand that sometimes you don't even pray. God just decides that. I just put it on it. That's why he said, for we know this one thing. God is able to do exceedingly. Upon... Hey, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Take it easy. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we may ask or so while you are thinking god is working mm -hmm. okay let's 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 preach now father we thank you we rely on you for your word and we ask that you speak to us in the name of jesus thank you blessed father in jesus name we pray Please forgive me before you take your seat. Turn with me to Genesis 21. I always like it when we read the scripture standing. When we take the national anthem, we stand. So, just my own little bit of interesting grace, but love me for it, if you can. Genesis 21, verse 14 to 19. Genesis 21, verse 14 to 19. If you are there, can you say amen? Okay, so let's read together if you are there. So, Abraham, Genesis 21. 
21 verse 14 to 19. I'm not seeing it on the screen yet, but I'm sure that they're, they're working on it. Can we go? So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Agar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Agar and from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Agar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Verse 19. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Praise the name of the Lord. Final verse, Proverbs 20 and verse 12. This is my anchor scripture for this morning actually. Proverbs 20 and verse 12. The Bible says, are you there? If you are there, please can, can you, let's go there. Let's get there together. Proverbs 20 and verse 12. Just one verse. Let's read it together. It says, The Yeah. Can we read them one more time? The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made them. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Today, I want to just speak briefly on what I have titled The Gift of Sight. The Gift of Sight. The gift of sight. When Pastor told me that it was divine revelation, I was just thinking, and that's what came to my mind the gift of sight. And I pray for you, like God did for a, a guy, that God will open your eyes and you will see. Because it's very important for us to be able to see. Now, God has provided for every one of us certain gateways. There are gateways that come into our life. There are certain gateways that you can use to access a man. There are certain gateways that God has prepared for the inflow of information that God wants to pass across to our hearts. There, is, there, are, there are gateways that you can enter into the heart of a person. One of those gateways is what is mentioned in Proverbs 20 and verse 12. In Proverbs 20 and verse 12, the Bible says that the hearing ear and the seeing eye is God that makes both of them. God is the one who created the eyes that hear, I mean the ears that hear, and is the one who also created the eyes that see. These are two major gateways that allow, allow us to receive information into our life. Now God is a God of secrets. In fact, I thank God when pastor was he, he, he was touching some scripture. I said, this man must have looked into my notes. And just kept bringing out the scripture so he even made my work easier. He said, but God says in Proverbs 25 and verse 2, which we read and we prayed on, he said that, that it is the glory of God to hide things. So God hides things. God keeps things in certain places. It is the glory of God to hide something. He said, but men are bestowed with honor when they can search out the matter. So men go into searching the matter. When they find it out, then honor comes on them because they search out the matter. Sometimes we want to pray for honor. We want to ask for glory. But the truth is that if you know how to search matters out, if you know how to go into the deep places and draw from the deep places, you realize that God has a way of bestowing story on all men who know how to draw from deep places and you see a lot of times and please permit me to just go a little bit away from the norm and just say this a lot of times we want to cancel every darkness but you know what god hides certain things in dark places now you know that the devil didn't create anything do you agree with me that, that so so can i ask a question who created darkness thank you very much keep that in your back pocket and think about it later God has a way of hiding things in certain places. Why? Because it's not everybody that is permitted to see the things that God has hidden. He keeps them there. So look at life, for example. And I'm going, I'm digressing a little. Look at life. But you see that the things that seem to make people wealthy in life are things that are hid somewhere. 
Oil is heat. Uranium is heat. Iron is heat. Everything. They're in dark places. When you go into the depth of the sea, there's a lot that is kept in those places that nobody can see. But when God opens your eyes and you see it, then you begin to fly high. I pray for someone just like God did for Eger. May he open your eyes. But you see, the good thing is that he didn't just say he will open her eyes. Because the truth is, in life, there are people who have no eyes. And because of that, they cannot see. If you read John chapter 9 and verse 1, John chapter 9 and verse 1, the Bible told us that there was a man who was blind from birth. Because he had no eyes, so he couldn't see. When God was going to turn the man's life around, what did God do? He collected some mud and he did something. I don't know what he did, but he just collected some mud. You know, that tells me indication. This is me talking now. This is not Bible. Maybe it's me talking. Maybe it's the Spirit leading me. But somewhere along the line, the man was in a hurry to leave heaven. So while God was trying to create him, before they put in the socket, the man left. <laughs> so thank God that God came. And that's why I say, look, your case is not laying of hands. Your case is not for me to, your case requires a surgery that I would have done that you didn't allow me to do when you ran down here. I know there are some doctors in the house, so you understand what I'm talking about. So he took some mud and then he put it down the man. So the man didn't see why, because he had no eyes. That's one case study. There's also people who have eyes, but they can't see. I have met, I mean, there's this story, somebody went to a place and he sat down there and somebody went and greeted him and he greeted him and he just casually and then sat down and he was angry for all the moments he was there and he was angry and just said, can you imagine the way he greeted me? He has no respect, he has no regard, he was just getting angry and then after the whole day, he now started complaining to somebody, you see that man, I greeted him, he didn't answer me, I said, oh, sorry, actually, even though his eyes are open, he could not see, but can you imagine that for one hour, somebody was angry on the inside? He was bitter on the inside for something that did not concern the other. That's why I see. I want to advise you. This is an advice. If anybody offends you, please forgive them for your sake. That's right. <laughs> I didn't say forgive them for their sake. I mean forgive them for your sake. Because the truth is that if you forgive them, it's better off for you. Because you know what? Some of us are too heavy. That's why God can't carry you. You are carrying too much on your heart. I want to give you a piece of my mind. By the time you give everybody a piece of your mind, when you are done, what will be left? Is anybody learning anything this morning? Please forgive me. That's how I preach. In my easy way, I just say what I need to say. Sometimes it is not the prayer that gives you the testimony. It's a change of your mind. That's all. So if anybody offends you, please, for your sake, not for their sake, forgive them. <laughs> and let them go so that you can be lighter. And when you are lighter, God will carry you. Number three, there are people who have eyes, but they can't see well. There's a story in the scripture in the Bible concerning a man in Mark chapter 8. I don't have too much time because I want to really wrap this up quick. Mark chapter 8. The Bible tells us of a man who came to Jesus Christ and Jesus laid hands on him and asked him, Guy, do you see anything? And the man began to confess. A very, very, very terrible confession. You know what he said? He said, I see men like problem. That's a major challenge. Because you see, when you see men like this, there are two things you are likely to do. Number one, you climb them to go up. Or you count them down to go up. So Jesus had to say, come, 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 come. Let's lay hands on this one because this is a dangerous man. Anyone you see who doesn't have a vision, who cannot see, is a dangerous man. He's a danger to himself and a danger to... See, that's why it's very important. This service is important for you. That's why revelation is important. Because, you see, what I've discovered is that any man who does not have a vision that God has shown him for themselves will always become raw material for the fulfillment of other people's vision. So you must have a vision for yourself. That's why you must see. That's why you must see. If you don't have a vision for yourself, you become raw material for the fulfillment of someone else's vision. You are going to support them all your life. But you know what? That's, how you, that's all you are going to do because you don't have a vision for yourself. That's why I'm praying for someone here. May God open your eyes to see. Amen. I don't like your amen, but I will take it. Amen. And then there are people who are blessed with eyes and they see well. Proverbs said... The eyes that see, God is the one that gives it to people. Proverbs 20, 12. The eyes that see, God gives them to people. Now you see the story, the, the, the story of Agar is a very critical. I need to jump some things now. But you see, story, this, let, me, let me just talk about Agar a little bit. Can I talk about Agar a little bit? Do you permit me to talk about Agar a little bit? All right. So this is Agar. And for whatever reason, Agar happens to be the slave of Sarah. And then Sarah got married to this man called Abraham. And there was a promise of God on Abraham's life. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. The promise was on. But somehow the promise was taking long. 
Oh, our sister shared a testimony 14 years, but look at Abraham's testimony 25 years waiting for the promised child. How can you tell a man that you want to make a man great and yet you didn't give him just one child? You couldn't give him one. And so when Sarah looked around and looked around and saw that things weren't working, she said, Look, I, I know God made a promise to us, but you know, God didn't tell you that it has to happen through me. Maybe God meant that you will have a child, I will be the mother of the child, but I'm not going to be the one that's going to murder the child. You understand? So he said, Okay, can I give you a side cheek? Can I give you a side chick? So they made Ega a side chick and she became a side chick. But you know what? The thing about side chick is that when the office of the side chick is over, the side chick is kicked out. By the time Abraham was done, he checked out and the side chick had to pay the bills. Mm. She had to pay the bills. Because that's what happened. By the time Sarah gave birth to a child, I asked permission before I started speaking. So you, you, you're not going to hold me on this one. I asked you for permission. That's why I said, give me permission to speak. <laughs> Praise God. You know, so well, 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 when, when it was done and Agar had given birth to a child and then Sarah now realized that God can still do what God said he would do. And she gave birth to a child. She said, no, the side chick has to be kicked out. Her job is done. Her assignment is over. Get her out of this place. And you know the funny thing is, when Abraham went to God and said to God, hear what your daughter is saying that I shall kick out the person. God said to Abraham, listen to your wife. <laughs> listen to your wife. So even God sanctions that the side chick can be kicked out. Mm. So they sent her out. But thank God that we have a God of mercy who did not forget her. Men may kick you out, but God will not forget you. Men may throw you out, but God will not forget you. So they sent her out and she left. And you know, before she left, he gave her a bottle of water. And I always remind people that whatever God gives you will last you forever. But whatever man gives you will always finish. Whatever man gives you will always finish. You know, men are so nice that they only give you what keeps you coming back to them. Mm. they will only give you what keeps you coming back to them it doesn't matter where you work it doesn't matter how much they pay you they will only give you what keeps you coming back to them because every man has something on their inside and when i say every man i mean including myself and everyone listening to me including you i mean every one of us have the prosperity that we want to be higher than someone else that's the only thing that makes us comfortable see you don't know your friend until god blesses you When you are blessed of God, then you know who your friends really are. Don't share your testimony and then you say, oh, God that did it for you, he will do my... Is that what we are talking about now? <laughs> Is that what we are talking about now? Come on. What are we talking about? We are talking about the Father God. Can you just rejoice with them that rejoice? Can you, can you just rejoice with them that rejoice? He didn't say when you are rejoicing with them, remember that you also have a pain. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Forget your pain and just rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can't find anything around you to rejoice about, please look out for someone who has something to rejoice about and rejoice with them. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. I'm talking about the seeing eyes, so I don't want to get digressed. See, when God opens a man's eyes, number one, two things will happen. Number one, you see God the way he is. See, the truth of the matter is that many of us have not seen God. We've not seen God. Because if we see God, we will change the way we approach God and approach the things of life. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. Isaiah 6 and verse 1. God, I mean, Isaiah was speaking. A man of God who had been preaching for a very long time. He got to Isaiah 6 and he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Ah, man of God. Are you saying that you have never seen the Lord before? You have to wait for chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5 to see the Lord. Because you see, at that time, Isaiah was a self-righteous man. Everybody around him was wrong. Woe to you. Woe to you. And you know, some people can preach woe. Woe everybody. Woe everybody. Woe. I mean, why don't you just stop wooing people and start wowing them? Woe, 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 woe. And the moment he now got to a point when Isaiah died. Why? Isaiah was a standard for him and that standard needed to go. Too many of us are where we are. We are stranded because we have raised a standard that God didn't raise for us. It's good to have a standard for life, but it must be God's standard. 
But you get stranded when you raise a standard for yourself. Whoa, 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 everywhere. Until the year that his standard crashed. When he saw Uziah die, that same day he said, I saw the Lord and his strength filled the temple. See, if you have not seen God, you won't understand what I'm talking about. That's why some people are proud. Some people are proud because they have not seen God. See, if you, see, if you think you are big, see God, then you will know that your bigness is nothing. The tallest of men is probably eight feet. How does that compare with the one who sits in heaven and he has made the earth his foot too? Oh, I live in a mansion. Thank you very much, sir. But how does that compare with a man who says, in my house there are many mansions? <laughs> one house with many mansions. What can you say? Oh, the road to my house is paved. How can that compare with the one who says that the road to my street or my streets are made of gold? See, that's why I don't wear gold on my body. I don't wear gold on my body because I cannot be wearing on my body what I'm going to step on in my future. <laughs> And I'm not saying it's a sin. No, there's nothing wrong with it. But that's me. If I must wear anything on my body at all, it has to be a higher level, not gold. Because it's the culture that I'm going to work on in my future. When I get to heaven, it's the child. So why should I wear it on my... That's why I'm free. Praise God. I didn't say it's a sin. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to wear it, fine. Go ahead. But I'm just telling you that me, I saw my future. And I want to act my future in my present. Hmm. I want to act my future in my present. In fact, that's the easiest way to enter your future. When you start acting it in your present. We call those things that be not as though they... When you, God opens your eyes, you will not only see God as he is, you will see you as you are supposed to be. You will see you as you truly are. You see, one of the things that the devil used to keep people down is the fact that he gives them a picture of themselves that God never gave them. A picture of themselves God never gave them. Many of us don't realize that the greatest, the best gift, the number one gift that God gives to you and I in the scripture is very clear. But many don't see it. And what is that? Let us make man in our image. First gift. The first gift is not the son. It's not, no, no, no. The first gift is an image. God wanted you to see what you look like. What do you look like? You look like God. Praise God. You look like God. And that's why you have to behave like him. Because that's what you look like. You are God in your physical nature. That's the truth. Have I not said to them, Psalm, 9, um, Psalm 82. Have I not said to them, you are God? And all of you. And so, that's why you see, when I hear people talking about demons, I am always wondering, where did this thing come from? Why are you so particular about demons? Some of you have actually, you have actually turned demons to God. Thank God for those who share testimony here. But you know when I hear someone who share testimony, Oh, the devil did this, and the devil did that, and the devil did that. And I, so they will talk about the devil ten times, then talk about God once. So who is greater in your mind? I don't see demons anywhere, I'm sorry. You know why? According to the Bible. <laughs> you know what the Bible tells me? I am seated far above all principalities and... How can I be far and be seeing what is beneath? I don't see them. And according to the scriptures, I'm talking about eyes that see now. According to the scriptures, there's just a third of the angels that fell and became demons. Which means that for every demon, there are two angels. No wonder the psalmist said, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know what? Anywhere I go, two angels are following me. Goodness. I mess. So whenever I tell somebody, whenever I tell somebody comes around and tells me monitoring spirit, I say I know the spirits that monitor me. Goodness, I mess. <laughs> you cannot confuse my mind, sir. <laughs> and you see what? No devil has a right to create prayer point for me. Mm. <laughs> he cannot. I don't wait. He, don't, he doesn't create any prayer point for me at all. <laughs> when I want to travel, I just travel. Thank you, Lord, because the road is safe. Somebody came to me some years back and said, Ah, you want to travel? Please don't go. I saw blood. I said, If you saw any blood, I thought you saw the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and I just moved on. <laughs> Praise God. I'm here. I'm still alive. Praise God. So, how do we enjoy the gifts of sight? I'll close in a couple of minutes. Number one, dreams. And I have a reason why I'm saying dreams. I'm saying dreams because sometimes when people dream, the only dream they see are bad dreams. They only see, they, 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 they confuse those kind of dreams. And you know what? Can I advise you? Anytime you go to bed and you wake up and you got a nightmare, please don't just shout, don't cry. Go back to bed. Let God change that dream before you wake up. 
Joseph had dreams and God showed him his future through dreams. The young boy woke up one day and he said, you know what? I saw us binding sheep and he's a nice guy. He didn't want anybody else to be left out. So he said, we were binding sheep and our sheep stood up. Everybody's sheep stood up. He said, the only thing is that when the others stood, my sheep stood upright. Mm. And the others bowed down before my sheep. There's nothing wrong with being selfish when it comes to the promotion of your life and destiny. Mm. <laughs> And the brothers were against him and they say, what are you saying that we are going to be greater than you? He said, I'm sorry. That's why I told you whenever you have a dream and you don't like the dream, go back to bed. He said, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Can I come back tomorrow morning and share the dream with you again? So he went back to bed and he slept. By the time he came back tomorrow morning, he created more problems for them. He said, but you know what? Now I saw stars. There are stars. He said, but I see the stars are there. However, I also saw the moon and the sun and they bowed to me. Joseph did not interpret his dream by himself because Joseph actually did not understand the interpretation of dreams. It was his father that, <laughs> it was his father and his brothers that taught him how to interpret dreams. Because they are the one that told him, if you see it like this, it means that you're going this way. And so the father said, are you saying that me and your mother and all of us are going to bow before you? He didn't say anything. He just accepted it. He just accepted it. Dreams. God shows you some things through dreams. He allows you to see a future. That's one way that God actually gives us eyes that see. You're in your dream and God shows you something. Number two is visions. And there's a little difference from that. Dreams can happen to you while you sleep in the night. But visions can come to you even while you are seated. You are wild awake. And God just shows you a vision of what it is. I won't have time but there are several scriptures that I wrote down here. That, 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 that God shows you things that are beyond you. Sometimes God will even show you things. I mean Peter was busy just doing the things that he was doing. And he had fasted. When he finished fasting. And then he just sat in one place and God opened his eyes and he saw a man that came down from heaven Phew. there's a lot to say about that but let me just say one or two things the man came from heaven and he saw so many food there and the Lord said to him the Lord said to him the Lord said to him Peter kill and eat and Peter said no Lord meaning that Peter knew it was God speaking to him you know sometimes even when God is speaking to men they will just pretend as if they didn't know but this one knew it was God but he was trying to correct God how many times have you corrected God in your life God spoke to you say no it's not God that is speaking he said oh, God but you know the Bible now why are you saying that let's do it this other way God has things see God Ah, oh, can you take this? I said this somewhere and some people were looking at me one guy, but let me just say it again. See, God is not normal. <laughs> if he tells you things that they are normal, it's not God any longer. I know that many times God speaks to you and says, this does not make sense. Excuse me, the one that gave you five senses, he must have more than you have. So when he says something that looks, it looks like it does not make sense, please, what do you do? Oh Lord, give me the sense that makes it to make sense. <laughs> you see, I pray my prayers. They, the sense that makes and it makes sense for you number one is dreams number two is vision and i pray for someone here may god show you visions of things that are real for you Amen. number three is a prophetic voice there was an issue in the land and some things had gone wrong in fact they had gone so bad that women were selling their children and a prophetic voice was raised a man of god said in second Kings chapter 7 and verse 1 to see 7 he said by this time tomorrow and there are times when things get so hard that god raises a prophetic voice and when i say prophetic voice it might not necessarily be a prophet's voice i say the prophetic voice not a prophet's voice because sometimes a prophet can actually say the wrong thing that's why for those of us who know how to run prophet after prophet, you better be very, very careful. I can give you one example just to be clear so that you don't say what am I saying. Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of God. He seemed to be correct. But God said, why are you crying to me? Tell the people that they go forward. So who told them to stand still? I didn't say anything. <laughs> but he thought he was doing the right thing and he sounded very religious. But you know, a prophetic voice can rise. The Bible says that believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe also his prophets and you shall prosper. So when words come from this altar in your direction, just believe them. Sometimes they may not give you a clue, as well, but God speaks to us. We read a scripture here that God will not do anything until he reveals this to his servants, the prophet. He will bring it out. He reveals it. So when God reveals something concerning you from anyone who has a gift in the area of the prophetic, accept it and walk with it because that's God speaking to you. Don't ever think that it will happen almost immediately. Sometimes God, see sometimes we, we time God and 
Some people say things like, oh, I'm being delayed, I'm being delayed, and they, every delay in my life. And I ask a question, sorry, sir, you are saying delay, delay. Was there any time that you and God had a discussion and he told you that what I said I would do in your life, I would do it in one week? Did you have a discussion like that? Did God tell you that, okay, this thing, I want to do it in two weeks. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, if he has not told you the time, why are you talking about delay? You're not being delayed, you're being prepared. Yeah. You're being prepared. He knows what he's doing. He understands the end from the beginning. He just told you where you are going to be to. When he was talking to the, 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 the man called Joseph in the dream, he didn't tell him about the pit. The pit was there. He knew about the pit. He knew about Potiphar's house, but he didn't tell him anything about that. He knew about prison. He didn't tell him. What he told him about was the palace. But you know what? Between your parents' house and the palace, there will be a pit experience when you are going to be down. There will be a Potiphar experience when it will look like things are working, but they are not yet working. And then there will be a prison experience when you will be excuse me do you know that sometimes you need to get to prison because if you don't get to prison you will not meet somebody who will introduce you to the person in the palace yeah it was in the prison that he met the two people the baker and the butler so god knew that the baker and the butler were going to prison so he arranged and said look the best place you can meet if you meet these guys in their office they will not attend to you protocol will block you but there's a place i will take them to in that place there's no protocol nobody will go with them they are going to prison so i will also send you to prison when you get to the prison place you will meet these men and then one of them will eventually forget you and then remember you you know what sometimes people forget you because god has this designed it for them to forget you because the time they should remember you has not come so when the time of remembrance come god puts it in their mind can i stand here to make a declaration everyone that god wants to use to prepare your destiny take it to where god god will bring it into their mind to bless you it happened that on one night the king could not sleep Mordecai had done something long ago and it was forgotten. The king that night could not sleep. You see, the Bible says that the ones that give sleep, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. When it was time, oh king, I know you have a good bed. Your bed is comfortable, but I'm the one who makes comfort. I take comfort out of your bed this night. You are not going to sleep. I know you have eyes and you can close your eyes, but you know what? You can't sleep tonight. Why can't I sleep? He said, no, there is somebody that needs to be blessed. And for that person's sake, sleep has been denied you. And in the morning, he said, is there anybody? What have we done? He was looking for somebody to bless. Somehow, come on, I feel like preaching now. He was looking for somebody to bless. And there was a blessing in the end. He was going from place to place, looking for a head that can fit the cup of blessing. And that day, Mordecai was just around. And they said to him, is there anybody that we have not blessed who did this? And they said, there's Mordecai there. For whatever reason, Haman was the only person that came around. How can the enemy be the one that will come around? See, God is an awesome God. Sometimes he uses the people that don't like you to bless your life. <laughs> so, 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 stop fighting for people to like you. You don't need everybody to like you. That's the truth of the matter. You see, you don't need to like me. But if you got my blessing in your pocket, bring it out. <laughs> can I have it here? Uh, you might not like me. I might not even like you. But you know what? I like the blessing. Just bring it out. Give it to me, sir. Let me move on. Praise God. Praise God. Aman didn't like him. But the blessing was there. I said, Aman, that man you didn't like. Take the tear of our car. Okay, I forgot I'm in years. Okay. <laughs> Take that car. See, that's what God wants for you and I. When Joseph left prison, he didn't just ride any car. Look at his life. Because of the eyes that see. This man came out of prison. That day, he became prime minister. As if that was not enough, the second official vehicle of the president was handed over to him. As if that was not enough, they looked for the priest and they said, Priest, this man is an ex-convict, but he will marry your daughter. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. That somebody is an ex-convict and he comes to your house and says, Daddy, sorry, sir. I'm just coming from prison and that God told me that I should marry your daughter. Who, who does that? But when God is in the equation, <laughs> when God gets into the business, he just came out of prison and married the daughter of... So, you know, either way, Joseph was settled. Even if he lost the prime ministership, remember, 
He is an in-law to him. <laughs> God settled him. Finally. Lord will settle you. Amen. Another way, God bless you, please be seated. Another way that you can get the gift of sight is through the scriptures. And I wrote something here. The scripture declares a picture of your future. See, there are things I do. There are things I don't bother myself doing. Honestly speaking, and I'm being very, very frank with you. I love prayers and I pray, but I won't tell you how I pray. I can't tell you that here. But you know what? Honestly speaking, there's something that I elevate higher than prayer. And what is it? The word of God. I elevate the word of God. In fact, the truth is, if I pray at all, and anything I pray is not word-based, I don't pray it. I don't pray it. I mean, I hear people pray, all my enemies go and die. No, 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 no. First of all, I don't have enemies. That's number one. Number two, if I have enemies at all, it is they who made me an enemy. But I understand the scripture. The Bible tells me that God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my by the time I finish eating, who is going to clear the table? I won't kill them. What will kill them is they are clearing the table for the man they thought will not do anything. They thought I won't get there, but they see me getting there. That's what kills them. That's what destroys them. So I'm not going to care. I don't have time praying those prayers and telling them they should go. And no, 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 no. Please don't fall and die. Stand and see. I'm not saying this to excite you. I'm telling you my life. This is how I live my life. This is how I live my life. So when people tell me sometimes, just, just leave that thing. We have settled our course. We have settled our case. The scriptures. What do you see in the Bible? I, I mean, I, I'm able to share this. You know what? I never got any. You know, some people will say that, and Pastor, with all due respect, sir. You no, know, please. Uh, you know, some people will say they received a call from God, and they will say they heard God say, son, son. The question is, I have never heard anybody say, daughter, daughter. So I'm wondering, is it that God is not gender sensitive? Why is it everybody son, son? I'm sorry, but you see my head, the way my head works sometimes, I, I think it has a problem, but it's okay. <laughs> you know, but I hear son, son. I never heard daughter, daughter. So everybody, and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm only wondering why it is one-sided. Now, how did I find myself on the pulpit? How did I become a pastor? And by the grace of God, trust me, I've done this now for over 26 years. So I'm not just young. Young at heart, but I've done it. I, I, I started. It. I, I was a pastor before I got married. My Bible tells me, wherever your heart is, there your treasure will be also. That's the Bible. I turned it around, and the way I turned it is that wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be. So what did I do? I followed my heart, and my heart landed me here. My heart landed in here. And it is here that I've gotten everything by the grace of everything that I am. is from here. Everything. Everything. I mean, how can a young man who was born in a family where we couldn't even, we didn't know what, I mean, you know, some people talk about suffering. I say, some people don't really know suffering. I know what I went through. I mean, in a room with my whole family, everybody, one single room. I mean, in that place, there's no, if you tell me that only two people can live in there, go and give me the house now. <laughs> You don't give me a house, it's there, two or two people can live there. But we're there. How could I get to the point when on my 50th birthday, the vice president of Nigeria wrote me a birthday message by himself with his son and signed it up by himself. And I asked myself, how did I get here? How did I get here? The only answer I found is God. How did I get here? I've entered places that I'm imagining. How did you enter this place? I'm flown to countries and enter countries. I've been receiving some countries and I wonder who are they even receiving? I look at myself and that's why when I'm traveling, I wear a hooded chair so that when they are receiving me, nobody will know who they are receiving. I just want to, I just wear it, just, just go careless so that let them know even, I don't look like it. But you know what? I don't want to look like it for me to become it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the scriptures, the scriptures are close on this note. And number five is spiritual insight spiritual insight child of god if there's anything i will beg every one of us is that we must get to the place where we get spiritual insight you see because insight is what men, makes men grow in size spiritual insight that god begins to give you insight as to what god wants to do and i'll just read one scripture on that ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18 Ephesians, if you allow me, I'll just read to you and I'll close on that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says, Having the eyes of your understanding enlightened, 
the eyes of your understanding enlightened so that what we have that you may know what is the hope of your calling you may understand the hope of this call that this call is not an ordinary call god has called you with a unique calling he didn't just call you he called you specially you have been chosen by god and when god chooses a man that person is qualified to be blessed by him he said i called abraham alone and i blessed him ephesians 1 18 that the eyes of your understanding may be what enlightened that's why he told that way say hey guy i've opened your eyes he opened her eyes and then she saw in other words, if he had not opened her eyes, she would not have been able to receive. In 1 Corinthians, I think, verse chapter 2 and, and verse 9, 1 Corinthians 2 9, the Bible says, But as it is written, what no eye has seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of man. That's what God is doing. That's what God is doing for them that He has called. Spiritual insight. That God will give you insight into the things of God. That when things are happening around you, you'll be able to see into it and understand what is going on. You get an understanding that is deep. You see what is going on. See, child of God, many of times we missed out God because we really could not understand what God is being. You know, sometimes people read their scriptures and they leave you confused. And that's why sometimes I don't want to read their scriptures. But if you read your scriptures well and you try to ask God, can I have insight into this? God will show you some things. So when you see something that is flying with wings of iron today what would you call it something that is flying with wings that are made of iron what would you call it so a plane right please can you just imagine that you are ezekiel what would you call it he was confused he was, he had never, seen what God was showing him, he had never seen it before. So when he saw it, he got confused. But God was showing him what was going to be ahead of him. See, let me say something to you, child of God. God can show you things that are ahead of you. He can show, do you know that Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus? I mean, he wrote Genesis, he wrote Exodus, he, he wrote the book of Job. He was not there when those things were happening, but God was showing him. God spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, I will show you what will happen. He said, your children are going to serve for 400 years in Egypt. And the man did not know. He, had, he didn't even have children when God was speaking to him. So God can speak to you about things to come. Am I communicating? God can speak to you about things to come. Why are you worried about the children that God has given you? And you are bothered, oh, what will happen to them? Can you go to God and ask him? Rather than pushing people to go and do what you want them to do, can you just ask concerning them and say, God, what is the plan for this person? What, what is the plan for this person? Because many times, you know, you just go and do all these things that you are doing. I mean, if my mother knew that I was going to be a pastor, all the money they spent, I think they would probably have put it somewhere else. Because that's what she asked me, ah, you want to be a pastor? So all the money that, you know how I sweated to make sure that I went to school. I said, I said, don't worry yourself, don't worry. I mean, the education I got there is going to help me. It is helping me deeply. It's only God that knows where you're going to end. Others may tell you what they think you're going to end. But only God knows exactly where you're going to end. As I close, I close on that scripture. I has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love you. But these things are revealed to us by the Holy Ghost. I pray for someone here who is hearing me loud and clear. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. Amen. Like you open the eyes of Eger, he will open your eye. Amen. I don't know if there's anyone who is desirous that God, I want to see. I want to be able to see. That's the only thing that Bartimaeus asks God. Jesus, son of David, let me see. That's all. You need to be able to see. The eyes that see. The eyes that see. The eyes that see. It's God that makes it. In the name that is above every other name, your eye will see. And your eye will see well. He asked Jeremiah a question. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? When he told him what he saw, he said, you have seen well. And because of that, you will live well. The reason many people are not living well is like they are not seeing well. I don't know why God brought you to this city. I don't know why you live where you live. I don't know how God brought you in. But you know what? If God can show you why he brought you in, then your life is settled. In the name that is above every other name, I pray for someone here. May God open your eyes.
if you can pray you can rise up with me and just 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 one prayer lord open my eyes that i may see that's all i'm asking of you open my eyes that i might see i want to see the reality of god I want to see the reality of your presence. I want to see the reality of my future. I want to see the reality of my destiny. Open my eyes, Lord, that I might see. That I might see my tomorrow. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see my children, my sons, my daughters. Open my eyes, Lord. I'm in school. I'm a student, but I want to know what you have in store for me. What should I do so that I will not waste my life? So that I will not waste my resources? Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Gabona si kamalia drebo shaka. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes, Lord, that I might see. Can you make that your prayer? Raka pato koseke riakaka. Those of us who are watching online, you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Rekapina masuta gaya, rekakapto koto kosenteria, ikamparu abasakante. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Reke patusa na mankari agabato se degebo santaria. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. Glory to you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I pray over your life for those of us who are able to have spiritual insight to understand and be able to say amen. I pray into your life today in the name that's above every other name that God will open your eyes and that you might see. I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That God will enlighten your eyes. That you might see into the depth of what he has called you for. The reason why God has planted you where he has planted may you see it. Many of us are afraid because we cannot see tomorrow. In the name that is above every other name. The way you are going that you have never been through. May God open your eyes to see the end. There is a God that knows the end from the beginning. And because that God is your father. May he open your eyes to see the end. May you see the end from the beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe there's someone here and you don't yet have a vision for your life. You have not caught a vision for your life. I stand under the authority of heaven and I decree and I declare over your life that God will show you your tomorrow. He will show you your future. Are you here and you are in darkness concerning the way that you are going and you are wondering what shall be and what shall not be. I stand under the authority of heaven and I decree and declare in your life in the name that is above every other name. May all darkness be cleared away. May you see in the name of Jesus. I pray for someone here that the deep things of secret places, the deep things in dark places, the things that God has hid, the things that make God glorified that he has hid, may God cause you to search them out in the name of Jesus. God prepared a coin inside a fish and jesus told peter go and catch that fish in other words the fishes were there but there was a fish that had a coin inside it i don't know the fish that is carrying your coin and i speak in in, in in parables here i don't know what place what department what unit i don't know what organization what office carries the coin of your life and destiny in the name that's above every other may god connect you to them may god connect you to them may god bring you to those places in the mighty name of jesus i don't know why you came to church today maybe there's a pain somewhere in your body maybe there's a pain somewhere in your heart maybe there's a pain somewhere in your family i stand under the authority of heaven i agree with you in the place of prayer that in the name that is above every other name every pain around you everything that causes you heartache may they disappear in the name of jesus may they disappear in the name of jesus maybe there's someone here and you had testimony of 14 months and you are saying to yourself lord you have done it what about me god sent me here today to say to you i have not forgotten you i'm working on your case i have your case file on my table you are next in line for a testimony you are next in line for a miracle what i did for your neighbors i'm about to do in your life as you leave this place today the lord will set you on high places he will set you on high places he will cause you to ride on high places in the name of jesus whatever has pulled you down now disconnects from you from now on you are getting out of the stock room and you are moving on the high places of life in the name of jesus the lord will bless you and keep you and always shadow you with his blessing and i pray for true vine in the name of jesus the last time i was here we didn't have a church but today we have a church 
Not just do we have a church, we have men and women who are serving wholeheartedly. We have children, we have teenagers, we have youths amongst us who are serving. My prayer and my God, I pray that by the time that we meet again, the weakest, the smallest of us shall be greater than a thousand. In the name of Jesus. I pray for your son, uh, dear pastor here. I ask in the name of Jesus that you lay your hand of might, your hand of strength, your hand of grace upon him. That as he leads this church, he will lead everyone into glory and honor. Together with his wife, Lord, you will give them the capacity to do greater works. They will do much more than they have ever thought of in the mighty name of Jesus. In their family, they will find the hand of God working. Every word that they pronounce from this altar, Lord, confirm them with signs following. In the name of Jesus, in their work and in the things that you have revealed to them may they be the best of the best let it be well with them we will never gather in the house of our pastor to say oh sorry sir oh sorry things we oh, sorry sir how is your health going in the name of jesus everyone in this house i decree your health and your wealth shall be preserved by the almighty god the lord said and he is very clear i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper i decree may you prosper i wish and wrote that may you may be in health i decree may you be in health even as your soul prospers as i close that decree you will not use your wealth to find health and you will not use your health to find wealth wealth and health shall be in your house in the name of jesus Thank you, blessed Father. We give you all the glory and all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have been blessed by the Lord, can you shout hallelujah? Some people like to shout. Some people, they don't like to shout. But whether you like to shout or you don't like to shout, do me one favor so that Jericho will come down. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.